I think if you ask most people in Spokane, even the most active trail users about Palisades, they really don't know it exists. It's really one of the absolute hidden gems of Spokane County. Because I live in the Rimrock and Palisades area with my family, it's really the heart and the center of so much of my life. These trails connect right to my house and I'm often out with our dog on our mountain bike. We trail run out here. I've seen all kinds of amazing stuff in the Palisades area. The changing landscape throughout the year, the moose that migrate through the area, um, the birds, and I've seen the sun come up through the fog. I've seen the trails austere white and yellow like they are now right before winter. I've seen them super saturated green. It's really a special area. It's a fantastic area. We want people that want to live here and trails like these are part of what makes that happen. The work of INLC and Conservancy in general matters so much. If we can't protect this land, if we can't lock it in to some kind of natural state, you end up losing it. It's the best of what this part of the country has to offer. I've always been passionate about the natural world. Originally wanted to be a biologist researcher and decided I could do more through conservation work and um, because I wanted to protect it more than study it. It's almost amazing to me that people don't realize all the ways in which we pollute the lake and, and the river. With the high concentrations of lead, cadmium, arsenic, zinc, those are the heavy metals that we're talking about associated with the historic mine waste contamination. We are seeing a lot of use out there and a lot of folks coming into the area that are unaware of the fact that they're in a Superfund site. But at least we can purchase conservation easements on the lands and work to restore those to being healthy. These parcels are also within the tribe's Aboriginal territory, and so protecting those into perpetuity is really important for the Coeur d'Alene tribe. They're protecting shorelines up and down the river and it's off some of the chain lakes. We wouldn't be able to do what we're doing as far as restoration in the Coeur d'Alene Basin if it wasn't for the partnerships. It's just a really critical program for trying to restore habitat, especially for wildlife. We know from years of data collection and modeling with EPA that the majority of the contamination from the Coeur d'Alene River is within the riverbed itself. You know, abiding by boat wake regulations, that's a big thing. And then for the lake, which is the heart of the Coeur d'Alene people, awareness of why we should all be good stewards of the landscape around us. Stay involved with the conservation groups, talk to the agencies. I think we just have to keep working with the communities like Coeur d'Alene. Not planting green lawns up to the water's edge, not using unnecessary chemicals or disturbing riparian buffers, which are a thin ribbon of protection from what we do on the uplands and upper landscapes. So I think it's just informing people of why we need to protect our gem, the lake, and uh, address the conveyor belt of contamination coming down the Coeur d'Alene River. Two of my favorite moments were being up in Swan Lake um, last summer, and we saw a female moose on the shoreline, and much to our absolute astonishment, we watched her give birth to twins. And another one that was just spectacular was um, a huge flock of brown pelicans just flew over our heads as we were cruising down the river. Those kinds of moments are just awesome, and if you want to keep coming back. The work that we do now is generational. Four Lane Tribe, we always try to do work for and think of seven generations ahead. It started with a ripple, like a ripple in the Little Spokane River, and it grew to this effort. A few years ago, Fish and Wildlife decided they were going to, you know, abandon their plans for a fish hatchery and the property was looked to be sold on the private market. Together, starting with a simple article that I read with a high school classmate in the Spokesman Review talking about the neighborhood's effort to protect the switchbacks here, led to this community conversation. We're gonna be protecting 95 acres just over my shoulder. We're also gonna be protecting over 1,700 feet of shoreline. We're gonna connect the dots over the next years and this is one of the key puzzle pieces to make it happen. Protecting this land doesn't just mean that we get to recreate in it and enjoy nature. It means that we're protecting fish habitat and the possible reintroduction of native species of fish into our little Spokane River. 
I'm really passionate about this project. It's important to me personally because I get to bring my kids here, show them some of the great work that we can do when we come together as a community, when we have great entities like the Lands Conservancy step up, when we have great partners like the Spokane Tribe, like our friends at the Fairwood Farmers Market, like my buddy Chris Zeller who alerted this to me to, to clean up the switchbacks. This connection is not just about connecting property, it's about connecting us to the land.